The Gerblin's been swinging a hot bat of late. Seven for his last 15. Here's the two and one. Deep to left. That ball is gone. The crowd loves it. I've never heard this much generic goblin noise. This video is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc. With free weekly content and free shipping on orders over $150, you can save 5% site wide by using the promo code MTGMUDSTA. If you're looking for a direct way to help the channel, please consider joining my Patreon and becoming a member of the Generic Goblin Gang. Hey gang, and welcome back. You're probably wondering why there's a game being posted on Friday. Well, I've got some good news. This is another special sponsored game. By taking on sponsorships like this, I'm able to help forward the channel and at the same time, bring you extra games. That's right, gang. This video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. I know you've heard of it. You've just got yourself a brand new phone and you're looking for the best mobile game to play? Enter Raid Shadow Legends with amazing visuals, loads of powerful champions, challenging PvE bosses, and great tactical PvP content. It's available on mobile and PC. But what's it really all about? Well, let me be your guide to all things Raid. In Raid, I love how you get to build your favorite factions, with mine being the Dark Elves. They have such amazing character models. My top three are easily Coldheart, Lydia the Death Siren, and Vizier Ovalis. And just so you know, Raid Call of the Arbiter is now in full swing. To celebrate this epic limited series, Raid's adding some of the new characters from the series as champions you can play with in-game. Awesome, right? The first one is Artak, a mighty orc warlord. What's super cool is that he's going to be available to everyone for free. All you have to do is lock into Raid for 7 days between now and July 24th. If you haven't started playing yet, then what are you waiting for? New players, use my link or scan the QR code right here and get a free starter pack with this amazing in-game loot. Once you're in and crushing your enemies, come find me under the name Mudsta, join my clan, and we'll be legends together. So just hit my link in the description, and I'll see you on the battlefield. I've got my Brazilian buddies back, with Rodrigo playing Borborygmos and Fibblethip. He keeps Forest, Two Islands, Rashmi, Eternity's Crafter, Victory Chimes, Azusa, Lost But Seeking, and Delayed Fire Blast. And for full transparency, Rodrigo is employed by Wizards of the Coast. Andreas is playing Ganex, Astral Hunter, and he's background with Acolyte of Bahamut, keeping Thrakus the Butcher, Draconic Muralist, Shamanic Revelation, Nature's Lore, Two Mountains, and Forest. Manuel is playing Camiz, keeping an island, Unburial Rites, Felwar Stone, Arcane Signet, Thriving Isle, Swamp, and Ledger Shredder. Last but not least, Omar is rocking Lycia, keeping Fetid Heath, Wooded Foothills, Smoldering Marsh, Two Plains, Emeria's Call, and Swiftfoot Boots. Rodrigo wins the die roll and starts us off. He draws, plays a forest, and passes. Andreas plays a mountain, passing. Manuel draws and plays a thriving isle and names white as the other color for it. Omar just plays a wooded foothills. Rodrigo draws and plays an island. Andreas plays a forest and pays two for nature's lore. He goes to find a cinder glade, putting it into play, and passing. Manuel draws and plays an island, then casts arcane signet. In response, Omar cracks his wooded foothills to find a blood crypt, and after that, Manuel passes. Omar draws and plays a plains. Two mana gets him a swift foot boots, and he passes after that. Rodrigo draws and plays an island. He then casts Cultivate to find a basic for the field, and one for his hand. He passes after that. Andreas draws and plays a mountain. He casts Draconic Muralist, passing. Manuel draws and then plays a swamp. He casts Ledger Shredder, and follows it up with Felwar Stone, triggering his Ledger Shredder, drawing him a card, and discarding Wonder. He passes after that. Omar plays a Plains, and casts Children of Corliss, and then moves the boots onto them, and passes turn. Rodrigo draws, and plays a Forest. He casts Victory Chimes, and once that's resolved, Azusa Lost But Seeking. This is the second spell for the turn, triggering Manuel's Ledger Shredder. Rodrigo unfortunately has no extra lands to play though, so he passes after that. Andreas draws and plays a mountain. He casts Ganex and makes a treasure as his commander comes in. Moving to combat, Andreas swings the Muralist at Manuel after he agrees to block, and he stops it with the Ledger Shredder, and it gets taken out. This allows Andreas to go and tutor for Ryusei, and he passes after that. 
Manuel draws and plays Obscura storefront, sacrificing it and grabbing a planes. He then casts Kamiz and follows up with Phyrexian Reclamation. This triggers the Letter Shredder, and he draws a card and discards a card. He then swings the Ledger Shredder at Rodrigo and gets the Kamiz's Kamiz trigger, and he draws a card and discards a land. Rodrigo then takes four, and Manuel then passes. Omar draws and plays a Smoldering Marsh. He casts Cleansing Wildfire on his own planes to go and find another one and draw a card. With that done, he passes. Rodrigo draws and has enough for Borborygmos and Fibblethip, drawing a card from his Enter the Battlefield trigger but discarding nothing. With no lands, he has to pass. Andreas draws and plays a mountain. He follows up with Acolyte of Bahamut, and follows that up with Tyrant's Familiar, which costs two less thanks to the background. Going to combat, he swings the Familiar at Manuel, and uses its trigger to destroy the Ledger Shredder, and uses its trigger to deal seven to the Ledger Shredder. Manuel then takes the 7, and after that, Andreas passes. Manuel draws and plays an island. He goes to combat, swinging his commander at Andreas. Manuel connives from the trigger and makes Kamiz unblockable, and after that, Andreas has no response. And unable to block it, but before damage, Manuel then ninjutsus in a Silent Blade Oni. This has Andreas taking 6, and Manuel looks at his hand, getting to cast Ryusei for free. He passes after that. Omar draws and plays Birth of Melitus, grabbing a planes which he plays for turn. With nothing else, he passes. Rodrigo draws and plays Oracle of Moldiah, but doesn't reveal the land off the top. Going to combat, he swings Bobo at Andreas to draw a card, and reveals a Gruel Turf off the top finally. In his second main phase, he plays the Gruel Turf, bouncing a land, and reveals an island off the top, which he also plays. He then replays the land he bounced as his third land for turn, and finishes up by foretelling a spell and passing. Andreas draws and plays a forest. Going to combat, he swings the Tyrant's Familiar at Manuel again, sniping the Ryusei, which as it dies, deals 5 damage to all non-flyers. Rodrigo responds by putting Borborygmos third from the top, and a good chunk of the ground creatures then die. Andreas then plays a Reckless Barbarian in his post-combat main phase, and follows up with a Kindred Summons. He flips into Lathless, Scanos, and a Hellkite Charger which all come into play, making him a bunch of treasure tokens from Ganax. He passes after that. Manuel draws and goes to combat. He swings the Oni at Omar and gets to cast a Marius Call from him. Manuel gets to make two angels, and in his post-combat main phase, uses Phyrexian Reclamation to get the Ledger Shredder back, and then recasts it from his hand, passing after that. Omar draws and makes a wall from the Birth of Melitus trigger. He then plays the Spike Field Caves as his land for turn, and then plays out Sarah's Ascendant. He equips the Ascendant with the Swift of Boots, and passes turn. Rodrigo draws, and decides to cast his foretold Delayed Blast Fireball. This deals 5 to each creature and each opponent, leaving only Lathless on the board. Rodrigo then follows up with Thing in the Ice, and passes. Andreas draws, and plays a Mountain. He casts Ganax again and Manuel responds by casting Thorns to Plowshares on Lathless before it resolves. Andreas then makes a treasure, and follows up with Thrakus the Butcher. He then casts Shamanic Revelation, drawing two, and passes after that. Manuel draws and casts a Phage the Untouchable, but with nothing else, has to pass. Omar draws and gains 2 life from the Birth of Meltus. He then casts a Twilight Prophet and equips it with the Swiftfoot Boots and hopes it'll live for more than one turn. Unlike some of his other turns, Rodrigo's is quite quick as he draws and casts Rashmi, Eternity's Crafter, then passes. 
Andreas draws, and at this point we realize Manuel didn't have enough black mana for Phage, and he puts her back to hand. Andreas then casts Crucible of Fire, and Rodrigo responds by countering it with Dream Fracture. This has Rashmi revealing a joint exploration off the top, which he casts, scrying two and drawing one. Andreas then casts Tavern Brawler as well, and moves to combat. He swings both of his dragons at Rodrigo, and Thrakus doubles their power to six each. Rodrigo takes the hit, and after that, Andreas passes. Manuel draws and casts an unburial rites, bringing back the Silent Blade Oni. He passes to Omar after that. Omar's got a Plains for turn, and then casts a Daminal Pact on himself, putting 3 in CDX to lose 3 and draw 3. He passes after that. Rodrigo draws and plays a Kadama's Reach, and Rashmi triggers, revealing Exploration off the top, which he gets to cast. He finds his land for the Kandama's Reach to go into the field tapped, and then plays the one he found from his hand to the field. He then goes to combat and swings Rashmi at Andreas for 3, who takes the hit. Andreas exiles the monster manual from the Tavern Brawler trigger, giving Ganex plus 4 plus 0, and then draws for turn. He plays a mountain for turn, and swings his dragons at Rodrigo. Rodrigo responds by casting Selene Vision, which flips the thing in ice. Manuel responds by casting Obscure Charm to destroy it, but Rodrigo has a counterspell with the Decisive Denial. All our creatures are then bounced, while Rodrigo gets a land off the Rashmi trigger, and finds a Mystic Confluence from Selene's Vision. In his post-combat main phase, Andreas then recasts Ganix, and then a Hazaret's Monument. He passes turn, and during the end step, Omar responds by casting Thor's to Plowshares on Ganex, and that wraps up Andreas' turn. Manuel draws and plays a tap Pajuka Bog, exiling Rodrigo's graveyard. He then replays the Silent Blade Oni, and passes turn. Omar's got a Swamp for turn, and plays out Divinity of Pride, but Rodrigo responds by casting Reinterpret to counter it. Rodrigo then gets to play Borborygmos for free from that spell, and once that's resolved, Omar casts Painful Truths, putting a white, red, and black into it to draw three and lose three. He passes after that. Rodrigo draws and plays Sulphur Falls, and an island is his land for turn. Moving to combat, he swings the Awoken Horror and Borborygmos at Andreas, and draws a card off Borborygmos, but discards nothing. Rodrigo then moves to a second main phase, recasting Rashmi and passing. Andreas draws and plays a Wild Endeavor. It resolves, and he gets three beast tokens and a few lands. He then plays a Minion of the Mighty and passes turn, and during his end step, Rodrigo casts Growth Spiral, drawing a card and getting to put a land into play. Manuel draws, and casts Coastal Piracy. This has Rodrigo responding by casting Mystic Confluence to counter it unless Manuel pays 6, and he targets to bounce the Silent Blade Oni. The spell resolves, Rodrigo also gets a Rashmi trigger, revealing Jadzi off the trigger and putting it to hand. And Manuel then plays a Thief of Sanity, passing turn. Omar draws, and plays the Twilight Prophet again, and once more equips it with the Swiftfoot Boots. Going to combat, he swings it at Rodrigo, who takes the two. Omar then casts an Aetherflux Reservoir, passing, and during his end step, Rodrigo flashes in Shadowkin, and this has Rashmi revealing Augur of Autumn off the top. Everyone mills three from the Shadowkin, and Rodrigo makes a copy of Jugan and then draws. Going to combat, he swings a Shadowkin, Borborygmos and Fibblethip, and Rashmi at Omar, and the Awakened Horror at Andreas. Andreas chumps with the Minion of the Mighty, while Omar takes the hit. On his second main phase, Rodrigo plays Baral, and gets a land off the Rashmi trigger, and then casts Oko. He upticks Oko to make the Aetherflux Reservoir into an Elk token. 
and then plays a Temple of Mystery off the top, scrying one. He bottoms the card and passes turn. Andreas replays Ganex, rummaging off the Hazard's monument and then making the treasures it enters. Going to combat, he swings all three beasts at Rodrigo, who blocks one of them with the Augur of Autumn. Rodrigo then casts Leadership Vacuum to put Ganex back into the command zone, and then casts Fumble off the top to bounce a beast token. The Augur then dies, and Rodrigo only takes three, and with not much more else to do, Andres passes. Manuel draws and goes to combat. He swings the Thief of Sanity at Rodrigo, and then ninjas in Silent Blade Oni. Before damage happens though, Rodrigo responds by casting Pair of Lost Dice, and rolls a 6. This lets him return Leadership Vacuum, Fumble, and two lands to his hand, and Rashmi reveals a land as well. Rodrigo then casts Fumble, and bounces the Oni back to Manuel's hand. With nothing else, Manuel passes. Omar reveals a mountain off the top from the Twilight Prophet, and then draws it, and then draws her turn. Going to combat, he swings both creatures at Rodrigo, who takes the hit for 5. Omar then casts Path to Exile on Rashmi, exiling the troublesome creature, and letting Rodrigo go and fight a land. He then passes turn. Everyone mills 3 from the Shadowkin trigger on Rodrigo's upkeep, and he is the Shadowkin become a copy of the Zapandrel that Andreas had just milled. Going to combat, Rodrigo doubles the power and toughness of all of his creatures, and is able to swing a lethal Barbarigmos at Andreas and the rest at Omar to take them both out. After combat, Rodrigo then plays Riel and passes turn. Manuel draws, but has no out in hand and nothing really on the field, and he knows when he's beat so he scoops it up. We've so got more, Ray, big thanks Call to Ray of Charlie the Arbiter, premiering very soon video. with 10 episodes. Game review time. So this game was a lot of fun, and I got to see a lot of brand new commanders in action. I wasn't expecting much from Ganex since it was an uncommon commander, but Andreas really showed me how powerful it can be. The reduction of being able to cast dragons for cheaper, not to mention that when they come in they get a treasure, really helped reduce the very expensive dragons, and he was able to power out a lot of them very quickly. I will say that I was a bit confused by that kindred summonings during his main phase, Manuel's Kamiz deck was a lot of fun to see, and it has a lot of cool inclusions like Ninjutsu, which capitalizes on Kamiz giving the creatures unblockable. I wish the Oni was able to connect a little bit more, but if he had, he probably would have run away with the game. Omar's Lycia deck didn't do a whole heck of a lot, and I feel kind of bad. I know he got land flooded, drawing into a ton of them, which is really not where you want to be that late game. On the flip side, Rodrigo seemed to have no lands early on, but was consistently hitting them off the top as soon as he was able to. I will say I was a bit disappointed that he never used Borborygmos and Fibbletip's ability when it connected by discarding lands to blast stuff, but he was playing his deck more as a control deck than a combo deck or aggro deck. This video wouldn't be possible without the help from my sponsors, Cool Stuff Inc., Multizone, Original Magic Art, and Alter Sleeves. But it definitely wouldn't be possible without the help from you, the viewers, and my patrons. So I just want to say thank you for watching, and to remember, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.